The following is a paid commercial program. Views expressed belong to its participants and are not necessarily those of the management and staff of NBC 17, WNCN TV. Rex on call. We're looking at the heart pumping. Take an inside look at the latest in medical technology, treatments, and health trends. Surgery uh, with that extra edge. Physicians are a phone call away, and Rex patients share stories. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. And medical breakthroughs. We're North Carolina's first bionic couple. Stories like yours, doctors answering your questions with expertise and compassion. We're live now with Rex on call in the NBC 17 studios. So I would generally say that anything that doesn't seem normal uh, to them should be evaluated. Good evening and welcome to Rex on Call. I'm Kim Dean for Rex Healthcare. Ladies, just because you're a woman, there's a list of cancers you're at risk for developing. This is Gynecologic Cancer Awareness Month and our focus tonight is to help you become more aware of the signs and symptoms of cancers that affect women's reproductive organs. The five most common types of women's cancers, as they're called, are cervical, ovarian, uterine, vaginal, and vulvar. Our experts will share the symptoms that you should never ever ignore and the screenings you just can't miss. If you're watching us live now and you have questions for our experts, give us a call. Our operators are there standing by to take your calls and your questions may be read live on air. To call us here at Rex on Call, just dial the number on your screen, 1-888-309-7437. Again, that's 888-309-7437. 309-7437 for Rex on Call. The experts answering your questions tonight are hematologist and oncologist Dr. Susan Moore and surgical oncologist Dr. John Bogus. As you're calling in with your questions, let's talk about those sometimes confusing cancer screening guidelines. Those screenings are critical in detecting cancer early, but ladies, do you know what those tests are actually screening for? And if the answer is no, you are not alone. The modern woman is a busy one, but too busy to know some important health screening information? We went to find out. True or false, there is a screening test for uterine cancer. True, false. Good question. I'm gonna say false. The real answer, false. Here's oncologist Dr. Susan Moore. There are not very good screening tests for uterine cancer. I would say that the most common complaint that would bring women to their gynecologist's attention would be abnormal bleeding, and that should be evaluated. Next up, what does that pap test actually test for? Is it, they scrape for cells, for cancer cells? I think it's cervical cancer, and probably I think they do transmitted diseases. What they're looking for at the pap tests are signs of cervical cancer or changes that might suggest um, that there uh, could be an increased risk for cervical cancer. But it doesn't screen for all other gynecological cancers as Christina Wolfer thought. What I really thought it was almost like when you get a comp like a blood draw like at your physical and they check for you know your thyroid and your iron levels and all that stuff. I just kind of thought the pap covered everything. Those screening tests are crucial, but Dr. Moore says women are oftentimes their best indicators of their own health. I would say that most women are generally fairly well in tune with what's going on with their body, so really anything that seems out of the ordinary. Last year, Marsha Gross was feeling something out of the ordinary. So I had a lot of pressure, so it was almost like pregnancy pressure where you just felt like this heaviness all the time and it was just very unusual so that's when i went into my gynecologist and had it checked and said something's not right here she was relieved when tests showed benign fibroid tumors marcia had a hysterectomy and now she says she's back to normal detecting gynecological cancers early is not always simple that's why dr moore recommends women make those yearly appointments to their gynecologists well the point of the screening test really is to pick up cancer before there are symptoms because once symptoms develop then really what you're doing is doing diagnostic testing so screening tests all the more reason to have them when you're asymptomatic because that's really when you want to pick up a problem when a cancer is small and very easy to treat so joining us now is Dr. Susan Moore, who you just met in our piece, and Dr. John Bogus. And guys, we already have some questions for you, and we were out in the street there asking those questions. And this first one is from Melissa Calatone. Let's take a listen. Are people genetically predisposed to cervical or ovarian cancer? And at a certain age, are you more likely to get it? Um, and what do we know? How do we know to, that we are, and how do we know what to look for? 
Okay, so who wants to take that one? Are, you, are people, are women genetically predisposed to get these gynecologic cancers? Anybody? Sure, I can answer that. Um, all of them are different. So for ovarian carcinoma, about 7% of women that get ovarian cancer do have a genetic predisposition. Okay. And it's accounted for by a gene that we can actually measure for it called the breast cancer gene or BRCA1 and there's BRCA2. And both of them increase a woman's risk of ovarian carcinoma. Unfortunately, 93% are still spontaneous. There probably are other genetic linkages that we're not yet aware of. There are some weaker, more rare genetic linkages that can increase your risk of ovary and even uterine carcinoma um, called the, the Lynch syndrome, and that combines colon cancer risk, et cetera. Cervical cancer, she mentioned. Cervical cancer, to this day, we don't have any genetic linkage between that. So if mom had cervical cancer, other than maybe lifestyle issues, we don't have any connection between the two so far. But we do think there probably are some genetic, what are called polymorphism, sort of subtle things in your genes that combine with environmental factors increase your risk of cervical cancer. Okay, and because there aren't these great screening tests, Dr. Moore, how, how do you detect, how do you find out if somebody has ovarian cancer or, or cervical cancer or uterine cancer? Really, for detection of cervical cancer, the most important thing that you can do is to have your pap smears done on a regular basis. And, and what about for uterine cancer, ovarian cancer? How are you finding these patients? The most important screening tool for uterine cancer is abnormal bleeding. So um, a lot of women can experience abnormal bleeding through their life for various reasons. But from age 40 on in particular, when the risk factor for uterine cancer starts to really go up, that's a warning sign and should never be taken for granted. Okay, we have some more questions. These are about um, family history from Kristen Brenzovich. Let's take a listen real quick. My question would be, as being someone who has been adopted, um, what kind of timeline they would say for um, getting checked out for cancer, if that would need to be later in life, like someone who has probably um, knows if it's in their family history or someone that doesn't know if it's in their family history, if they should be checked out earlier. So she doesn't know her family history. Does that affect what kind of screening she's getting? Anybody? <laughs> Not specifically. Okay. Um, it's still recommended that a woman have a pap smear every one to three years, depending on her screening regularity and also her risk factors for cervical cancer. So that applies no matter what someone's family history is. And any abnormal bleeding that we mentioned needs to be evaluated by their gynecologist. Bleeding in between periods, bleeding after a time that menopause was supposed to have already happened, or very, very heavy bleeding always needs to be evaluated. As far as ovarian cancer goes, which is the one we've already spoken about as having a genetic linkage and she doesn't know her family history, um, that one's harder to answer. And unfortunately, without knowing any other relatives and what their story is, there are not specific guidelines for her. I also don't want to prey on her insecurity. I don't want her to think she's getting this tomorrow. And so she needs to just look for those things that are not right about her body, abdominal swelling, um, a decrease in appetite, uh, pants not fitting the same way. All of these things are general symptoms that yeah, can. So, so like you were saying, anything out of the ordinary. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. The phones are ringing, so we're going to be back to answer more of your questions. Everything, all these signs and symptoms. Call us now with those questions. The number is on your screen, 1-888-309-7437 for Rex on call, 1-888-309-7437. And in addition to questions, we're also going to talk about the art of robotic surgery. Less invasion, uh, invasive for the patients and a better view for the surgeon. Stay with us. Furniture provided by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries in Raleigh-Durham. At 36, Joe was concerned about having her first child. A specialist saw something on an ultrasound and recommended a difficult choice. Joe came to Rex for a second opinion. She was evaluated and reassured at the UNC Specialty Women's Center at Rex. Not long after, Levi was born. It's a brand new day. It's our favorite kind of story. Sun is shining. One with a happy it's beginning. A brand new Rex day. Healthcare. Before the bariatric surgery, I really remember being quite miserable. I was self-conscious about my size, challenging to do anything from tying my shoes to getting in and out of my car. Rex is a certified bariatric center. And they have a great success rate. It was like people looked through me before, but now it feels like people see me. Life is just so much easier. My brother and dad, they love to play their sports. They really like tennis, 
bowling, golf, hockey, but their favorite is football. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Mom, we need to go to Rex Express Care again. Whenever sudden sickness or injury strikes, we always go to Rex Express Care. You can check wait times online with no appointment necessary. When you can't wait to feel better. Rematch. Rex Express Care. Welcome back here to Rex on Call live on NBC 17. Tonight we're talking cancer that is specific to women and the signs many women may overlook. If you have questions for our experts, call in now and ask. The number is 1-888-309-7437. Operators are taking your calls for oncologist Dr. John Bogus and Dr. Susan Moore. And let's take some questions. We have a lot of good ones. This is from Barbara in Durham. She says she's 54, had a hysterectomy. Her general uh, practitioner says she doesn't need a pap. Should she be getting a pap on a regular basis? Well, actually, um, there's very good evidence now that depending on a woman's risk factors, if her hysterectomy was done for non-cancer reasons and she had no pre-invasive cervical lesion before, meaning a dysplasia or an abnormal pap smear before, that it's not necessary to continue to get a pap smear. Um, having said that, if she ever had any vaginal bleeding or an unusual vaginal discharge or something new, it's not unlikely that her doctor would want to do an examination and even may include a pap smear in that setting but a screening pap smear is no longer necessary in that setting. Okay, this question's from Linda in Raleigh, age 57. She had breast cancer and had ov her ovaries removed. Can, um, how now does she determine if she has uterine cancer? How would you determine that? Well, again, the most, um, most important thing would be to, to be on the lookout for any abnormal vaginal bleeding. Any kind of abnormal bleeding would be definitely something that would need to be evaluated. So anything out of the normal, once again. Okay, and this is from Patricia in Goldsboro. She had gastric bypass taking Depo Provera, um, and she's been having regular bleeding like a period. Um, is that normal? What should she do? It depends a little on how long she's been on the Depo Provera, but Depo, there are women who still have bleeding on Depo Provera, and um, being heavy means that you still have estrogen in your body, even if it's being suppressed by the Depo Provera. So it's not unusual or uncommon, but if a bleeding pattern seems excessive or very unusual, she should check in with her doctor and make sure that they know that she's having those difficulties. Okay, this is a question from Carrie and Raleigh. What kind of um, gynecology clinical trials are offered at Rex or UNC? <laughs> well, most of our trials uh, for gynecology patients would, would generally be cared for by the GYN oncologist at Rex. So. Yeah, we have a whole spectrum of trials. We're a cooperative or a comprehensive cancer center, and Rex is an extension of that program. It's comprehensive, including Rex. And we have protocols and trials that are run by the Gynecologic Oncology Group, which is a branch of the National Cancer Institute, and these are national clinical trials for women with G1 oncology problems. We also have trials that we create at UNC, new novel drug therapies, we have new surgical trials, new ways of looking at cancer and diagnosing it, and so there's actually a whole list of trials and protocols that we have, and that can be accessed through the Leinberger Comprehensive Cancer Center and through our website. And, and there is such a great collaboration between Rex and UNC yeah, during all this. Absolutely. It's an extension it's not uh, one or the other it's an umbrella that covers both institutions okay dr. Moore is there a diet you tell your patients uh, a, an exercise regime that you can recommend in terms of cancer preve <coughs> prevention absolutely diet and exercise is incredibly important for so many different reasons and cancer is definitely one of those reasons I would recommend that everybody try to be active at least four days a week 30 to 45 minutes of some type of aerobic activity and maintaining a healthy diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables